Um, okay, so everybody should see the, the demo screen right here. It says demo at the top. So this is essentially what your students will see when they connect to BrainFuse. Um, so today I'm just going to go through all the different options uh, that your students will have. Um, I'm happy to take questions whenever anybody has them. So you can feel free to shout them out. Um, or I'll try to stop and ask for questions as well every few minutes. Um, but feel free to shout out questions whenever you have them. Um, okay, so the way it's set up will depend on the way you work it out with our tech department. Um, but usually there's a link put somewhere on your site, um, maybe within a Blackboard type system or something similar to that. Um, so that only allows your students to actually access the site here. Um, and then once your students are on here, all they have to do is click on the different options we see here to access the different parts of the service. Um, so there's three tabs here. Expert help is the first one. And we have study and collaborate, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, so the expert help section here has a few different options we can click on. Um, each of these, yes? Um, how do the, our students get exported into BrainFuse? Um, do you have a, a system that's like Blackboard or something similar to that? Well, we don't want to put it in Blackboard because we, we want to make it available to all the students, not just the Blackboard students. Okay. So um, that's not... I don't usually deal with the technical setup, but our tech department is would be happy to work with you on exactly where you want to put the link and how you set it up. Um, so they, they've worked with a number of different types of institutions who all want to do it a different way, so they're happy to customize it for however you'd like to do it. We can put a link there and just do an import like we currently do with Smart Thinking, where we have one person send you a list of all the student IDs. Yes, we could do that. We've done that many times. So we would, we would use that list to either pre-create usernames um, or just load them into our system so the student can create them uh, either way. But yeah, we're happy to do that where you send us a list. Um, I had a question about the contract. Um, I know with our, with our previous online tutoring, mm -hmm. the college would pay part of the cost for the state system pay part of the cost. Do you know how it's going to work um, with your system? Sorry, I couldn't quite hear the, the last part of the question. Um, on our previous contract, the colleges, the individual colleges pay part of the cost and the state system pay part of the cost. Do you know if it's going to work that way with your system? Uh, no, I'm not sure about the payment offhand. Um, that would be something worked out between the, the West Virginia system uh, and you know each individual college. I'm not sure if it's all being paid for in one go or if the, each college pays for a part of it. Um, any other questions right now? No, not yet. Okay. Um, so each of these options that we have here, these are all customizable. So if any of these are not relevant or you'd rather not have them, um, they can be removed each of these buttons we see here. Um, but today I'll just pretty much explain each one, uh, and these are different things that your students can have access to if you'd like them to. So the first button here is Live Help. It's sort of our foundational service, and it allows your students to connect with our live tutors. So if you click on the Live Help button, uh, then you just have to choose the subject you'd like to connect for. So the subjects we have listed here can also be customized. So we have Business, and then accounting, econ, and finance within business. We have computer and tech. We have Excel, PowerPoint, Windows, and Word. And we have English, or we have reading uh, and writing. And we have math, uh, where we have general math topics here, standard math topics. And science is the last one. Um. There's pre-algebra. I think the question was about intermediate algebra. Um, so we have pre-algebra here as, uh, as an option. Um, these, if, there, if there are different ones you'd like to have listed here, we can, uh, we can customize it. And the science option has anatomy, biology, chemistry, and physics. So you just choose the one you want, click on the Get Live Help button, and that will connect you with a live tutor. Uh, we'll look at a live session at the end today. Uh, to see exactly how it works. So when you click on this Get Live button, Get Live Help button, 
um, it opens up our online classroom and automatically connects you. Um, but we'll see that uh, towards the end today. You can also click here if you'd like to get a Spanish speaking tutor. Um, right next to the live help button, we have Skill Surfer. So this basically is a list of lots of lessons that we have created for some standard topics that the students can look through on their own. So if you um, have a math topic you're looking to get some help on, so you choose College Algebra. Um, and then within College Algebra, we have each of these subtopics in blue. So for example, numbers and operations. And then there's actually a list here of 105 lessons within this topic. Um, that includes text lessons, and then also there's these video lessons that we have created. So that will you know, go over that topic in a video format, solving some sample problems, things like that. They're narrated with audio. Um, so these are all here for students. They can click on these on their own and either read through the lessons or watch the videos. Did you see one of the videos? Sure. So this is uh, types of real numbers. So I, I can hear the audio. I don't I don't believe you would be able to because it's just it's playing through my headphones. But the the they uh, they all have audio, so they have someone talking over what's going on in in the video here. How long is that? I'm sorry. What was the question? This one right here is seven minutes. And so we have that available for uh, reading and writing, some math topics here, and then biochem and physics. Um, the next option here is the writing lab. So this lets your students send in pieces of writing to have them reviewed by one of our writing tutors. So the student just uses the, follows the simple instructions here to actually send in a document. It goes out to our tutors. One of them accepts it, works on it, and sends back their review uh, within one business day. So their turnaround time is a max of one business day from when the student sends it in. Um, usually we respond more quickly than that, uh, especially, and even if a student sends something in over the weekend, we always try to get it back within 24 hours, but we just say one business day. Can you go through what time to I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear the question. What kind of feedback would the students get? Yeah, sure. Um, so let me open up a sample here. I'm just going to pause the screen for a second and open up a sample. Um, so essentially the tutors are giving feedback on how the student can write a better paper and become a better writer. So our goal is not to pick out all the typos um, or all the grammar errors. It's more on the focusing on the big picture to help the student to go back, make some changes, and write a better paper. I'm just opening up a file right now, and then I'll show it to you. OK, so this is a, a sample paper uh, that we sent back. They all come back with our rubric on the top. So that's sort of this form uh, document here, uh, some general comments. And then the, the comments specific to the student's work are down here in the numbered sections. So there's a few sections here. Uh, and then after the rubric is finished, which ends right here, you have the actual paper the student submitted. Uh, and then the tutor will embed comments within the paper uh, as well. So that's what the comments in blue text here are. Those are made uh, by the tutor. Um, it depends on the tutor. Some of them put more comments down here in the actual body of the paper. Some put more up in the rubric. Um, it depends on the tutor and the type of paper the student submitted. Is there somewhere on the site where we can um, look at the qualifications of your tutor? Um, it's, it's, I can tell you about that. I, think, I don't think it's on the site here. It might be. There might be one. When, when your students actually access it, there might be a frequently asked questions option which I don't see on this particular site that I'm using, but this is just one we use for demos. Um, but essentially, the, the tutors are all US-based. They all have at least a four-year college degree. Most of them, for the higher level topics, have uh, advanced degrees. Um, they all go through uh, a full background check and training on our system and our policies. Um, and then they have to take tests that we've created to uh, prove they can tutor in their subjects. So 
So our tutors are only approved for the specific subjects that they can tutor in. Uh, and a large part of what we do in the office here is tutor quality control. So tutors who aren't doing a good job, who don't know their subjects, who in general aren't good tutors, you know, we don't keep working with them. Thank you. Sure. Um, so to send in a document here, you just follow the instructions. So you attach the file uh, here. Any standard document type is fine. Add any comments down here in the comments box. So you can type out what the assignment was um, or any instructions you'd like to give to the tutor. And then click on the submit button to send it in. So this message here directs you to the message center. And that option is right up here at the top of the page. So this is where any documents you send in will be saved. Uh, it's also where the document that we send back uh, will be saved. So this is the one that I just sent in. Now, when that document comes back, what kind of format will that be? Is that a Word document or something the student can download? Yeah, usually a Word document, um, unless the student sends it in in a different format. Um, but even, even if they send it in as a PDF, you know, those can't be edited directly on it. So we'll usually send it back as a Word document. And the response comes um, within BrainFuse, or does it come to the student email? It comes right here to the message center, so it's within BrainFuse. Um, and depending on the way your students access our, our service, there may be a notification sent. Um, so if you're actually giving us the student information, including an email address, we can set it up so that when we send back a response, there's an email sent to the student to let them know. Um, a lot of our programs, though, uh, we don't require personal information from the students. So in that case, we don't send an email notification. But it will just depend on what information you give us when we're creating those student accounts. Great. Uh, so that was the Writing Lab. The next button here is the 24-7 Center. This one works exactly the same way as the Writing Lab, except you can send in questions here through the 24-7 Center. So any academic topics here, the same ones we saw before. You just choose a subject. Say you choose geometry. Type out your question. You can attach a document here if you have one. That's optional. And click on submit. So this works the exact same way as the writing lab documents. So we'll, we'll respond within one business day at the most. Usually we respond more quickly than that, especially for questions sent in here. Um, and again, we'll never give out answers. So if a student sends in a math problem, we will either just get them started if it's a problem with a lot of steps um, or most of the time what we'll do is work through a similar problem to show you how you do that type of question and then the student can then go back and use that information to do their actual uh, specific problem that they submitted. Can so those... The live help is the only part of our service that has limited hours and the hours will be whatever was set in the RFP, which I'm not sure of offhand, but whatever it's set in the RFP will be the hours we stick to. Um, it's, it's usually something like 8 to 9, 10 hours a day, 7 days a week, uh, but again, it depends on, on what was requested. Um, so that was the 24-7 center. Questions submitted there are saved in the message center, exactly the same way as for the writing lab. Um, the next option here is the language lab. So this is for any students who are learning Spanish. So English speaking students who are learning Spanish, we have live tutors available here who can help them. Um, Spanish is the only language we currently offer, so it's the only option listed here. So you can choose that, click on connect with tutor, um, and that will connect you with a tutor who can help you with learning Spanish. Um, for anyone who is a native Spanish speaker and is just more comfortable learning in Spanish, um, that's why in the live help option we have this checkbox here. So for example here you can choose a geometry tutor and then click on this and that'll get you a geometry tutor who can help you in Spanish. So usually that's for native speakers. Um, the next option here is the adult learning center. Um, I don't know if this will be relevant for your students um, but this is a service that we offer. Um, it overlaps a little bit with some of the options that we saw already. Um, these options here on the right are just some live academic tutoring options that are geared towards adult learners. Um, but the real difference with the Adult Learning Center for uh, your students would be the options here on the left, um, where we have options for students who are preparing for the GED or for the U.S. Citizenship Test. Uh, we offer help with resumes here. 
I'll click on that option. Um, so if any of your students are creating a resume, we have some resources here for resumes. In the middle, you can upload your resume to us and have it reviewed, just like those writing lab documents you can send in. And then on the right here, you can connect to a live resume tutor. Again, those hours would be the same uh, as the live tutoring options for the academic tutors. On the Microsoft Office, what version is that? Yeah, Microsoft Office is the next one here. So what we version? offer help. Yeah, go ahead. What version? Up to the most recent version. So we offer help with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint up to the most recent version of each program. On the left here, we have online resources, including some tutorials, online tutorials. And then on the right, you can connect to a live tutor and ask any questions you have about those three programs. Uh, the last option here is just some career resources we've compiled that students can use to find uh, available websites to uh, locate jobs. So these are just some job sites. We have general job sites, and we have job sites for students and recent graduates, and down at the bottom, job sites for veterans. So that's the, what's offered here in the Adult Learning Center. I go back to the home page. We'll go right back to this page here. And the next option here is called LEAP. So we call this the College Skills Program. Essentially what this does is it lets you choose from just a couple topics. So you can choose English and then reading or writing. Or you can choose math and then college algebra or pre-algebra. So you choose one of these. Um, you click on Start, and that assigns you a diagnostic test. So the student takes this test, and then based on the questions they answer incorrectly, uh, it's, we assign them essentially a, a learning plan that they can go through. So the, they got you know, 10 questions wrong that tested these skills. The learning plan will contain our lessons and our videos on those topics, um, in addition to some quizzes the student can take after they've gone through our lessons and videos. They can take these short uh, two, three question quizzes. Um, on that topic to see if they've learned it. Um, so it's just a, another way for students to you know, practice reading, writing, uh, and algebra. Um, and you can take all the topics. So you can always come back to this page. And you know, if you've already taken math diagnostic, you can then go take the reading or the writing one. Can, can you open up the writing diagnostic? Sure. Um, so normally it just opens up, I believe. For some reason in this account, I don't think it is right here. Yeah, so normally that should open up when you click on it, when your students click on it. For this one, it, it just assigned it to me as a test, but I believe that's just because of the account that I'm using today. So you click on the start a test. <clears throat> so this is the, the first part of it. First question, uh, this, this one has 20 questions, so you, t you go through all of them, click on done. And then if we go back into the, the leap option, it gives me this is the learning plan that's tested here. So these are the questions that were answered uh, or answered incorrectly. I didn't actually answer any of the questions. So this might look a little different for a student who actually took the test. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, we have the lessons and the videos and what we call the mini quizzes that were assigned based on the questions that student answered incorrectly. And then if you want to take a diagnostic, you can click on this tab and that'll go back to the, the request a topic page. Thank you. Sure. Um, so that was the leap button. Um, the last option here is called Tutor Match. Um, this is a, a, a service we offer at it lets you schedule, pre-schedule a session with a tutor. Um, it can be used either with our tutors or if you have a, your own tutoring program that you're going to integrate with our tutoring program, you can also schedule sessions with your own tutors. Um, it's good for the higher level subjects um, or if you're looking for a specific tutor, um, that type of thing. Otherwise, you can always use the live help option and just connect right away. But this will uh, let you schedule a session in advance. Um, any questions here about what we've gone over so far? How can we find out our live help hours? We haven't seen the RSP. Um, I can check on that and get back to you. Let me make a note of that now.
I'll send that. I'll send that to Sherry. I believe is who's the whose contact information I have. Okay, and then a follow up question on that. I mean, apparently we pay for part of the services, but does that limit how? I mean, do, if we go beyond a certain amount of services, do, will we be asked to pay extra, or how does that work? Now, I'm not sure how the payment's set up. Um, I can check on that as well, but I think that's mostly decided between the colleges and you know the overall. Um, association of colleges. I don't think that's really something that we deal with, but I can double check. I'll, I'll check with my supervisor on that and the access hours um, and get back to Sherry. Any other questions for right now? Okay, um, I'll click on the study tab here is the next option. And we have some uh, additional options available here. So there's six buttons you can click on. Flashbulb is the first one here. So this just let, lets students enter flashcards um, if they're looking to memorize any terms. Uh, they can enter flashcards online here. So most of the time the student will use the Create Now button here on the left to enter their own cards. Um, we also have on the right um, all these different topics you can click on. And this lets you search through sets of flashcards that have already been created. Uh, most of them have just been created by other students, so they may not be accurate. Um, plus, they probably won't cover the exact words you're looking for. Um, so these are just here as an option. Most students will use the Create Now button. Um, and then once you've entered flashcards, uh, you can just look at the cards as you would with hard copies. You can print them out to actually get hard copies. Um, but there's a lot of additional options as well. So the system will create different games to help you memorize the cards, like crossword puzzles, word unscramble, um, hangman, matching, a bunch of other games. You can take little quizzes and tests when you're ready to test yourself on the cards. Um, so there's a lot of options here in Flashbulb, all designed to make memorizing easier for students. Um, next to the Flashbulb button, we have an option here for GRE. So again, some of these tests may not be relevant for your students. These can be removed if they're not. Um, but we have the GRE option here, which essentially gives you uh, a live help option here on the left. So you can connect to a live tutor. We have practice tests here in the middle. And then on the right, we have some resources for the GRE test. Um, and we have the exact same things. If we go back to this page, that was the GRE. We have the exact same options for AccuPlacer and Compass. So within AccuPlacer, we also have the resources, practice tests, and live help. And the same thing for Compass. Um, this resources button right here is essentially a customizable page for, uh, for you if you want us to add any links here for your students. Um, some uh, libraries or schools will like us to add a link to their home page um, or to, others, uh, to other pages that their students might use to get academic help. Um, so any links that you'd like us to add can be added here in the resources option. Uh, and then the last button down here is the test center. So this is where we have academic practice tests that your students can take. So if I click on that button, uh, we just have English, math, and science here. So you choose one of the topics and you can take a practice test in that topic. If I choose math, you'll see the basic math topics here. Then if I choose science, you see the uh, science topics here, anatomy, biology, chemistry, and physics. Um, any questions there about anything within the study section? Okay, um, is everyone still able to hear me? Okay, just want to make sure. Um, so that was the study section. Um, the Collaborate tab here is next. Uh, we just have two options here, uh, Meet and Brainwave. The Meet session, uh, sorry, the Meet feature here lets you schedule an online tutoring session with whoever you'd like to invite. So it uses our online classroom, um, just like when you connect with one of our live tutors, uh, except in a Meet session here, you're only going to be connecting with the people that you invite to the session. So it might be used by students to have a study group from outside of the classroom. Um, it could even be used by a teacher 
to give extra help to students outside of the classroom, but it's essentially an online meeting in our online classroom with the people that you invite to the session. So if you click on the button here, you actually schedule uh, one of the sessions just by entering the email addresses here of everybody you'd like to invite, put in the date and time, the description of the meeting, and click on send. So everybody whose email address you enter uh, will receive an email that contains a link they can click on to join this session. Um, as far as the options you have uh, within one of these sessions, they're essentially the same as when you connect with one of our live tutors. And we'll look at a live session in a few minutes. So we'll see what the online classroom looks like. Um, and that would be the same options that you'll see here in a meet session. When you schedule... Go ahead. Kind of computed as a student may get be the connector with um, there's, there's no download or anything required, um, so it all use, it uses standard um, options that you have on a, on a computer when it's, it's purchased. You don't need to buy or, or download anything additional. So like here in the lab, I'll remember what different heads that I would have to buy. I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear the question. Like here in the lab, all we would need is a speaker and a headset? Uh, yes, yeah. So um, for these sessions, there is audio available for the meet sessions. With our tutors, uh, the sessions don't use audio, but in the meet sessions here, uh, yes, you can use audio. Um, and we'll go over the rest of the online classroom when we connect for that, so I'll show you all the options you have. Um, when you schedule one of these sessions, it's saved in the My Calendar option here at the top of the page, so that's where that meet session uh, would be saved. Um, I have to double check on that. We have an app, so I know you can do certain things. You can access certain parts of our service, um, but on the phone you cannot use live tutoring. But I'm not sure about the iPad, um, whether you can actually do the, the live tutoring option on the iPad. Um, I can add that to the list of things that I check on. But we do have an app. It's just called BrainFuse, um, and it lets you access your account um, and you know different things within that account, just not the live tutoring portion of it. What's the cost of that app? The app is free. Um, so that was the Meet session here. Next to that we have Brainwave. So this lets you uh, essentially record little videos using a smart board. So let me just, instead of explaining it, I'll just show you how it works here. So if you click on the Create a New Brainwave button, either here or up here, this window tells you a little bit more about Brainwave. And then when you're ready, you click on Begin Recording down here at the bottom. Essentially what's opening here, we call the Brainwave Notepad. It, uh, it's essentially our online classroom, so you'll recognize this window when we connect for the live session. So we're not connected with the tutor or anything here. We're just using the smart board space up here and all these buttons to type out or draw whatever, I, whatever you'd like to on the board. So a student might use this to show how to solve a multi-step math problem. For example, I can put a graph on the board. I can add a line to the graph. And, you know, I could work on finding the slope of that line or whatever the problem is that I'm trying to solve. I can go through all the steps. It's being recorded here. So when I'm done, I just click on Stop Recording. You give the brainwave a name. That's called Slope 520. And then click on Save. So that saves the brainwave right here. This is the one we just created. So I can click on play to replay that on my own, or you can actually send this to somebody else. So you just click on the envelope icon over here, enter their email address, and that will email a link to them that they can click on to watch this brainwave. So uh, even a teacher could create these, or a professor, um, and send them to their students. Uh, we also have the brainwave library tab here. So this lets you search by keyword for brainwaves that other people have created. So it's sort of like those flashcards where you can access sets of flashcards that others have created. You can do the same thing here with brainwaves just by searching uh, by keyword. And you can always... Go ahead. Uh, you said that instructors could uh, create these uh, brainwaves. Uh, do, in our contract, are uh, instructors uh, giving access to this for the students? Uh, we, can, we can give instructors access to it. Um, I'm not sure what it says in the contract, but we can give instructors access to it as well. Um, the My Brainwaves option here 
is what you can click on to always access your Brainwaves page. Um, any other questions right now? Well, in addition to importing our students, do we still, if we choose that option, have a generic password that we can use with, you know, other people that we want to see the site or new students to start late or something like that? Um, I'm not sure about a, a generic password, username, password. Um, I'm not sure that's something we've done before. Um, but again, uh, that's something our, our tech department would work out with you. Um, they, they'll be happy to you know, give you whatever you need to give all your students access to it. Um, I, I just don't specifically know about a, a gen generic username and password. Um, but again, they'd be happy to figure it out and get it to work with however you need it to. Um, any other questions for right now? Okay. Yeah, did someone have a question? No, sir. I think we're good. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and connect for a live session now. I'm just going to pause the screen for a second to get it set up. Uh, and then I'll unpause it. We'll go back to the, the home page here. So the first button that we clicked on today was the live help option. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that again, and we'll connect for a live session. So let's say I choose English and Writing, and then I click on the Get Live Help button here. Uh, so this is our online classroom that's opening up. Um, this will always look the same, no matter what subject you choose. So you always see the same online classroom here. Uh, there's basically two parts to the online classroom. There's the chat box down here at the bottom, and the whiteboard space up here at the top. <clears throat> um, so this is a tutor who just happens to be online now. Uh, this is Billy. Um, you can see they're typing to me. Sort of, this is essentially an instant messaging feature, the chat box down here. So I'm going to type them out a quick message to let them know I don't need a session. Um, so that's the main way uh, that we communicate back and forth uh, is in the chat box down here. Uh, but you can also use the whiteboard space up here uh, to communicate with your tutor. So this is a shared space. Um, both the tutor and student see the same thing here. So it's interactive. Anything the student puts on the board here, it's visible by the tutor and vice versa. Um, so you can use all these buttons that we see here to put various things onto the whiteboard. Um, so I won't go over all of them, but if you put your mouse over each option, uh, it tells you essentially what that tool does. So anything I'm doing on the whiteboard now, the tutor would see it and vice versa. Um, so you can click and type anywhere on the board. Um, a lot of the times this area is used to solve a math problem, to solve a chemistry problem, something like that. Um, that's how it's used most of the time. But there are some other uses for this area as well. Um, our tutors have access to a lot of different lessons uh, that they can load here. So if a student logs in looking for general help on um, you know, multiplying fractions, whatever the topic is, the tutor can load our lesson on that topic into the whiteboard space here and then work through that with the student. Um, if a student logs in to get help on their resume, the tutor could load sample resumes, um, our resume templates, uh, some other resources we have for resumes um, and, jo and job searching in general, um, things like that. So the tutors have a lot of resources they can load into this area here if it would be helpful to the student. Um, the student can also do things like uh, copy and paste. Sorry, I didn't actually mean to click on that. So that was the copy-paste tool. So let me um, if I open up that writing sample we looked at before. So let's say I, I highlight this, I copy that, and I go back to the online classroom here. You just put the cursor where you'd like to paste it, click on paste, um, and it'll paste uh, that text. So if the student's working on um, a paper and they log in with a writing tutor, they can paste it here and look through that with a tutor. Um, or anything else that can be copied and pasted. So images from websites, anything like that, um, can be put on the whiteboard. Um, you can use this button here to put number lines on the whiteboard. So I can click and drag that. I can also choose the graph option, click and drag that onto the board. Um, and you can double click on the icons here to change the X and Y values. Um, there's the shapes tool that we saw before. You can use that to put lines on a graph or some other basic shapes on the board. Um, you can also change the color. So 
and the, the next thing you put on the board will be in that color. Um, you can get a long list of math symbols here if you need any. SCI does the same thing for science symbols. We have a superscript and a subscript button, and then at the bottom you can clear the whiteboard. Um, up at the top, there's some additional buttons here. Uh, the print option lets you print out the whiteboard in case there's a solution to a problem there that you'd like to remember. You can print it out. Um, however, you don't need to print that out if you'd like to remember something. If we go back to the website, you have this past sessions button up here at the top. So all of your live tutoring sessions are automatically recorded and saved here. So essentially they're recorded like a video. You can log back in at any point and re-watch your live tutoring sessions here. Um, the orange icon next to each one lets you convert that to a brainwave file. And then if you remember with brainwaves, you can actually send those to other people. So you can send a recording of your live tutoring sessions to somebody else. Um, back in the online classroom here, you can also use this envelope icon right here to enter your email address and that will email a link to you that you can click on to view the recording of the session. Um, so that's just another way you can get access to that uh, session recording. So you don't actually have to log into your BrainFuse account if you click on this button here to send yourself a link. This option here lets you upload a document directly to your tutor. So you can send them a paper you're working on uh, or any document uh, and then they can go over that uh, and you can, you know, essentially you'll both have access to that document so if it's a long paper that you don't want to paste onto the whiteboard here, it might be better to send it using this button. Um, and the last option here is Cloud Pack Explorer. So I didn't click on that option here on the website. We have where it says My Cloud Pack up here at the top. Um, this is essentially a storage device. So this is the first time it's been opened in this account. So all it says here is My Cloud Pack. I can add any folders I'd like here in My Cloud Pack. I can add folder for... Uh, English papers, you know, um, math class notes, whatever folders I'd like to add here. And then you can upload documents into these folders. So they're saved there. It works in one capacity just as a storage device. But the nice thing about it is when you're in a live session here, you can take any documents that you have uploaded into your cloud pack. You can access them here and that will upload them right onto the whiteboard. Um, so you can upload that onto the board and then you and the tutor can look at it together. They don't expire, so they'll, they'll remain there as long as you have an account. Um, so that's essentially how the live sessions work. Uh, if you're connected for a meet session, so that's one of those sessions where you invite people to the session, you'll essentially have the same whiteboard here. Um, you can have more than two people in one of those sessions. So the participants box here you know, might have four or five people, however many you invited to it. You would essentially all be working on the same whiteboard. You'd all be able to chat in the chat box here. Um, so it would be, you know, a communal session. Um, so those are, that's essentially what I wanted to go over. Those are the main services that are offered, um, as well as the live session. Um, are there any other questions I can answer? Um, anything I can go back over? I'd be happy to do either of those, those things. If you can add to your list of questions, um, knowing who our account rep or tech support from BrainFuse is, Sorry, I couldn't quite hear. It was about uh, tech support, the question? Yeah, well, we have a, an account rep assigned to our school in particular. Um, there's no account rep signed in, in particular, but we have a, a tech support line that your students can call directly if they have a problem, um, and they can our tech department can you know work it, work it through for them. Okay, I, I, that's great, but I'm more concerned about... Um, as a school who we get in touch with at BrainFuse if, we're happy, if we have questions or concerns. Okay. Um, well, you'll, you'll definitely be in touch with somebody who will send, because uh, I believe every, each link will be set up specifically with each, each college, each school. Um, so that will be sent to you by someone here at BrainFuse. So you'll definitely have a contact. It'll either be me um, or Elise, my supervisor, who will probably send it. Um, so you'll definitely have a direct contact at BrainFuse who, who you can get in touch with with any questions or issues you have. Okay. Okay, and you had mentioned that we could customize our, our subject choices, like your math. Um, I'd be very interested in us getting a list of what the possibilities are there that we can choose from. 
Okay. I mean, the, the list that we have is pretty standard. I mean, if you have other subjects that are missing, as long as it's a standard subject, you know, that we already, that we have, we'd be happy to offer it. Um, I, yeah, I'll check also on that see, and see if we have a full list of subjects that we can offer. Also, back to the diagnostics test, um, the one that you showed us was looked like a grammar diagnostic. I was wondering if there's any sort of writing di diagnostic composition. Um, there's not one that actually requires the student to submit a piece of writing. Um, if the students do want to do that, they can do that through the writing lab. Um, but our diagnostics are just sort of our multiple choice tests. Okay. And was there just the one level of writing, I mean, of math as far as the diagnostic? Uh, in the LEAP, if we go to the Take Diagnostic page in math, you can take pre-algebra or college algebra. Um, and this is this page here is just some uh, ways to increase usage um, that some people find useful. Uh, it's sort of just different ways you can promote the service, you know, get the word out to students, get them to try it out. Um, you know, it it depends on the client whether they actually need this. Sometimes, you know, from day one, students are are using the service all the time, and you know, some it's it's harder to get the students to try it out. So, uh, if you ever have any questions about ways to increase usage, that's something we'd be happy to talk about. That leads to the question of, have you all been contracted to do um, webinars with our faculty members at some point? Uh, we'd, we'd be happy to set up more webinars like this, um, and you can invite whoever you'd like to. Um, so uh, I'd be the person doing those as well. Um, if you want to set up additional webinars, just reach out to me anytime, um, and we can set those up. And, Sorry, I couldn't quite hear the question. You said you're able to set up webinars whenever you know, we want you to. Well, most of our faculty have gone for the summer now, so will we be able to do that in August when they come back? Yeah, any any time is fine. Any time in the future. I mean, even even if you want to do it, you know, after a year of using our service to give new faculty um, the option to to learn how to use the service, we can do that as well. Is there a demo site that faculty members can play with? Um, we record these webinars, so I can send you access to this recording or any future recordings. Um, we don't actually have a, a demo site or anything like that, but we can send you materials um, that, you, that you can distribute. Any other questions for right now? Good. Okay. Um, so thanks everyone for attending. Um, if you do have any questions in the future, you can always feel free to reach out to me um, or for scheduling those webinars as well. I'd be happy to do that. Um, if you send me all the other questions, I will get it distributed. I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear the question. If you could send me a list of all the answers to all the questions. Yeah, yeah, I wrote down the questions that everybody had um, and I'll get back to you. Okay, thanks everyone for attending. Have a great day. Thank you.